Hey, I'm Dr. Bob Cargill, and welcome back to Bible and Archaeology's tour around the Nativity as we discuss how we came to have this iconic scene we have today. Previously, we talked about the translation of Luke 2 7 and the famous line, No room in the inn, and we discovered that the word translated as inn is better understood as guest chamber or guest room. And if you missed that video, click the link here to get caught up. However, Correcting the translation of in to guest room only gets us halfway there, because we are still left with Mary and Joseph seemingly having nowhere to go, as the guest room is all full. So just where did the nativity scene take place? I would venture to guess that if you closed your eyes and pictured the setting of the nativity, the image that comes to mind is of a rough and ready barn made of rough cut timbers or a stable set in a natural rock feature covered with straw. But does the text actually mention anything about a barn or a cave? Where does this image come from? Let's look back at Luke 2.7. And she gave birth to her firstborn son, and wrapped him in bands of cloth, and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the guest room. Notice that there is actually no mention whatsoever of a change in the setting within the text. So where is this manger? Understanding this part of the nativity scene requires understanding domestic architecture from the first century. This is an aspect of domestic architecture that has a long history and can clearly be seen in the material evidence excavated from domestic structures. What does this mean for our understanding of the nativity? Well, it likely means that Mary and Joseph are not simply kicked to the curb when the guest room is full. Rather, it likely means they simply go downstairs. And here's the key point. There is a manger present in which to place baby Jesus because the downstairs of the house was typically a place to stable the family's animals. The animals lived downstairs on the floor and the family lived upstairs in rooms. It's like living above your garage, except instead of a car or a motorcycle, there's a donkey or some other form of first century transportation. So, if there's no room in the guest room, which would be upstairs, Mary and Joseph would have had to move downstairs with the animals, and hence the manger. Now, is it possible that the manger described in the text is something different, some external structure used solely to house the animals? Sure, it's possible, but not likely. It was probably a trough that's conveniently about the size of a crib. So that's the key to understanding the manger. Now, you don't need to go off and throw out the barn from your nativity set, but the next time you look at the manger in the middle of that lonely little structure, remember that the manger described in the Bible is likely located on the bottom floor of a house that is packed to the roof with guests. It would have been a full house that night with plenty of guests and visitors, with a few more on the way. By the way, who exactly is going to be dropping in? Find out in our next video. Until then, for all of us here at Bible and Archaeology, I'm Dr. Bob Cargill wishing you everything the best.